Welcome to Electron Online, and here's a different aspect to how we calculate relative velocities and how we can find out something interesting like this. Let's say we have a plane that's trying to fly from LA to Bakersfield, roughly 120 miles apart, roughly directly north from Los Angeles. And let's say that the pilot did not check the wind conditions or the weather conditions, and there's a wind blowing from the northwest down to a southeast direction 20 miles per second at an angle of 60 degrees south of east. The plane can go 120 miles per second and let's assume that the pilot doesn't know what's going on, starts flying this way and the wind carries them of course in this path right here. That's of course the relative velocity to the ground of the plane. So the question then is what angle will he be pushed off at and where will he end up? How far away from Bakersfield will he be when he reaches the line that runs directly east-west through Bakersfield. What's that distance? How far away from Bakersfield will he be? All right, let's see if that was a serious error of the pilot or not. But first of all, we need to find a way to go ahead and find that angle. Well, again, we're going to use vectors and triangles. So we have the vector representing the velocity of the plane. We have the vector representing the velocity of the wind. So we can draw that right here. So there's the velocity of the plane, and here's the velocity of the wind. Now of course you want to make the length of those vectors relative to the velocities representing, uh, represented by those vectors. So this is 120 meters per second and this one here is 20 meters per second. Of course this angle here is 60 degrees below the horizontal. The resultant velocity will be this velocity right here. So that will be the vector sum of the two. like so. So that would be velocity relative to the ground of the plane and we want to know what this angle is. So let's call this angle phi. What is that angle equal to? How do we figure that out? Well, we need to come up with a right angle triangle but he, because this doesn't really work for us. So if we assume that we have a line that goes directly across like this and we can figure out what the size of this triangle is, we're in good shape. So what we're trying to do now is try to find out what the sizes of these sides are like that. And this is still the angle phi. Now what you can see, see is that this side right here is equal to the opposite side to this angle right here. So let's make this a 30 degree angle right there, like that. And we know the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. So that allows us to find this side right here. So let's call this side x. And we can see that x is going to be equal to the hypotenuse which is 20 times the sine of 30 degrees because it's opposite this angle right here, 30 degrees. So that will work. So we can say that x is equal to the hypotenuse which is 20 times the sine of 30 degrees. Of course the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. 1 half times 20 would be 10. So the value of this side is 10. Now this side right here is going to be equal to 120 minus this side right here. So now we have to find this side so let's call this side y. And this side is adjacent to the angle, so we can say here that y is equal to the hypotenuse 20 times the cosine of 30 degrees because it's adjacent to the side. And of course, uh, 30, take the cosine of that, is 0.866 times 20 is 17.3. Good enough. 17.3, and of course, this is, these are relative numbers and these were representative of velocities in meters per second. All right, which means that this side now will become 120 minus the 17.3, which means that this will be 102.7. So that's the side right here. 10 is the side right there. And so now by using the arctangent, we can find out what that angle is. We know that tangent of phi will be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side which is equal to 10 over 102.7 and therefore phi will be equal to the arctangent of 10 divided by 102.7. All right, so 10 divided by 102.7, take the arctangent of that and we get 55 point, whoa that doesn't look right, let's try that again. 10 divided by 102.7, must have pushed the wrong button, and take the arctangent of that, and 5.56 is a lot better. 
5.56 degrees. So now we know the angle right here. So now we know that the plane will be flying unknowingly, even though the pilot will be pointing the plane in this direction. The plane will veer off like this at an angle of 5.56 degrees east of north. Now, where will he end up? Now we can go ahead and draw this triangle right there, knowing this angle right here. So now we have a triangle that looks like this. Uh, we have the angle right here, so we know that the angle is phi, and phi, we find out, is 5.56 degrees. Okay, we know that the distance from LA to Bakersfield, which represents this line right here, now, so now this vector now represents distance, not velocity, and it represents the distance from LA to Bakersfield, which is 120 miles. And we want to know what x is equal to in miles. Now we have the angle, we have the adjacent side, we do not know the opposite side, so again we use the tangent function. We can say that the tangent of phi, which is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side, which in this case is x over 120 miles. If we don't want to solve that for x, we go ahead and rearrange the equation. x is equal to 120 miles by taking 120 miles and multiplying it over here times the tangent of phi, of course the tangent of phi would be the tangent of 5.56 degrees. All right, so let's take the tangent of that and multiply it times 120 miles, and we get 11.7 miles. X equals 11.7 miles. So, by not taking into account that wind, the pilot will end up at 11.7 miles away from Bakersfield over here, and they'll have to turn the plane around and start flying in that direction. All right. That's how you do that problem. Again, it's all about triangles and finding right angle triangles and finding the appropriate sides relative to the angles that we have. Okay, and also one more caution here. Always make sure that the length of the vectors are proportional to either the velocities that they're representing. So 10 meters per second, 120 meters per second, 20 meters per second, and so forth. Or in this case, the length of the vectors were proportional to the distances that we were looking for. 120 miles and then the unknown distance x. So always make sure that the length are indeed representative of the values that you're representing. Okay, that's how you do it.